Uh, Rob, um, ahead of this visit, Biden knew it would be controversial. So why the risk? Why the gamble? What does he hope to get out of it? You know, one thing seems for sure, Jamal Khashoggi is not going to be mentioned at, at these talks. Uh, Joe Biden's been asked on numerous occasions whether you bring it up. He avoided the question. He says, everybody knows my stance on human rights. There's no need for me to reiterate it, essentially. Uh, the reason is, as you pointed out in, in your introduction, it's the fear of recession. Uh, the United, Joe Biden representing the United States wants to make sure or wants to try to persuade the Saudis to start pumping more, more oil so that the price can come down. But uh, it's also clear that nothing is going to come out concrete from these talks uh, in Jeddah. The hope, I think, will be that uh, when it comes to the OPEC plus one summit on August the 3rd, uh, that Saudi Arabia will have sol solidified its position together with the United Arab Emirates and will have agreed with the United States to start pumping more oil in the hope that the price can be brought down and the U.S. can avoid a recession and Joe Biden and the Democrats get a fillet for the U.S. Elec midterm elections in November. And Joe Biden making the trip from Israel to uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, a literal flight, but also a very symbolic one, too, as the two countries are taking steps towards normalizing relations. Yeah, I think, I mean, this, this is the other, as you're rightly saying, this is the other significant thing about the trip. This is the, the leadership role that Joe Biden's been talking about for the last few days, uh, including an op-ed in the Washington Post. So he, basically, he's saying that Donald Trump walked the United States out of the Middle East, left a vacuum, and Russia and China are starting to fill it. He wants to prevent that happening. Whether that's what it's really about, I don't know. But certainly the Israeli angle is important. Uh, it was one of the big issues that came up during the talks uh, with Yair Lapid, the Israeli prime minister, during his talks in Israel. Uh, and, you know, the, the, it, it's already beginning to happen, this integration slow integration of Israel into the regional architecture with the obvious target be it being Iran and the threat posed by Iran. Although, interestingly, the United Arab Emirates, which is also part of that regional group, uh, has warned that it doesn't want to be sucked into an alliance which targets Iran as an enemy. Uh, but, you know, there's no doubt that that's what he can, he's going to be talking to uh, the Saudis about. It's, Saudi Arabia is not about to join the Abraham Accords and recognize Israel, uh, but bit by bit, often beneath the surface, Israel and Saudi are already getting pretty close. And just today, the Sa Saudi Arabia has announced it's going to permit commercial flights by uh, Israeli airlines across Saudi airspace, just another step. And then the, that, that first, which I think you mentioned as well, of Joe Biden being the first U.S. president to fly direct from Israel to Saudi Arabia. It's a symbolic step, but it's indicative of the direction in which things are moving. Indeed. Thank you very much, Rob. Rob Parsons, French 24's chief foreign editor. Let's look a